Have you ever found yourself scrolling through Twitter or diving into fan theories, reading endless comments speculating on who a celebrity might be secretly dating, or even questioning their sexuality? It feels like harmless curiosity, right? But what if that harmless curiosity was, mm, say, about you? about the most private parts of who you are. Now imagine millions of people dissecting your every word, your every glance, your every outfit, trying to put a label on you. For celebrities like Harry Styles, Billie Eilish, and Shawn Mendes, just to highlight a few, this isn't just fan theory. It's a daily invasion that turns their private lives into puzzles for the entire world to solve. This obsession isn't just curiosity, it's a mirror to something deeper in our culture, a way of policing how people present themselves and a desperate need to box others in in order to make ourselves feel comfortable. But why are we so fixated on pinning down someone's sexuality? Well, grab your drinks, because we're about to take a look at how our culture's demand for labels and definitions might just be hurting all of us. I love bananas, come and welcome here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where people watch me speak about whatever crosses my mind and I am okay with that. With the recent statements made by Shawn Mendes in regards to his sexuality and how the media and public's opinions had an impact on that journey, I thought it'd be perfect for us in today's video to dive into the tangled web of speculating about celebrities' personal lives, how it reinforces outdated views on gender performance and overall expression, and how for some turns the journey of self-discovery into a battleground. So. Let us discuss. In today's culture, the public's fixation on celebrities isn't just about their talents or achievements anymore. I've noticed that public figures nowadays face intense scrutiny over who they may or may not love, forcing some to come out before they're ready, while others endure persistent, baseless rumors that take a toll on their mental health. Just to quickly add a disclaimer here, I'm not going to exclude myself from this conversation because I too am guilty of this behavior. Questioning celebrities' sexuality seems relatively innocent, and we do not always do it with bad intentions. In my Harry Styles video, within the context of the queer community, I spoke about how many LGBTQ plus people seek out queerness within pop culture in order to find a reflection of themselves, to squeeze in queer representation wherever we can. For others, engaging with viral memes or jokes, speculating with friends, or even shipping within fandoms are just fun pastimes with little social impact. However, we need to recognize the potential dangers in continuing with our little quirky investigative habits because we're now at a point where it's transcending the boundaries of social media media communities and seeping into not only just real life but politics as well. The public's fascination with celebrity sexual orientations is not a new phenomenon, believe it or not. It stretches back nearly as long as Hollywood itself. This obsession took root in the early days of cinema and only intensified with the rise of mass media, the studio system, and of course, tabloid culture. Throughout time, celebrity sexuality speculation evolved from hushed whispers to a cultural fixation with profound consequences for the stars involved. During Hollywood's golden age, aka the 1920s to the 1950s, studios tightly controlled the public images of their stars with the strictures of morality clauses and the powerful Hays Code dictating the kinds of roles, relationships, and behaviors that were acceptable on and off screen. Despite these restrictions, speculating about the private lives of movie stars became part of the allure of Hollywood. Tabloid magazines like The Confidential thrived on publishing stories hinting at stars' personal lives, though they often used coded language or insinuations, obviously. LGBTQ plus stars such as Cary Grant and Rock Hudson lived in fear of exposure. Both men faced speculation about their sexuality throughout their careers, yet neither could openly address or confirm these rumors without risking their livelihoods and their reputation. Also, just to add a quick note here, I would have been ran through in the 1950s, okay? Because why was everybody so hot? The studio system was well aware of the risk that rumors of queerness could pose to a star's career and took aggressive measures to conceal it. Studios often arranged lavender marriages, aka heterosexual marriages used as cover, to protect the gay or bisexual stars and to silence the rumors that could damage an actor's career in a conservative, largely intolerant society. The 1960s brought the sexual revolution, civil rights movements, and the beginning of LGBTQ plus conservatism, leading to a slightly more open dialogue around sexuality. Stars like David Bowie and Meg Jagger were part of a new wave of musicians and actors who played with gender and sexuality. But it was in their art or their public personas. They were promoting questions about their real life sexual orientations. Bowie famously discussed his bisexuality in interviews, which at the time was groundbreaking. Yet still, many celebrities had to thread carefully as openly identifying as LGBTQ plus could still mean career suicide. Tabloid culture expanded with publications like the National Enquirer, which normalized speculation and invasive reporting on the personal lives of celebrities. 
Though some figures like Bowie could still use speculation to enhance their mystique, for others it remained a threat. For example, Liberace was plagued by rumors about his sexuality throughout his career, famously suing the Daily Mirror for libel in 1956 after it implied he was gay. Even though many people guessed his orientation, Liberace never came out publicly and repeatedly denied the rumors, largely due to societal pressures. In the 1980s, the AIDS crisis tragically reshaped the public's perceptions of queerness and fueled even more invasive curiosity about celebrities' sexual orientations. For instance, actors like Rock Hudson, who became one of the first celebrities to publicly die of AIDS, faced brutal media coverage that often turned his sexuality into a spectacle. Hudson's death shocked the world and exposed the harsh realities of both AIDS and the hidden lives that many gay celebrities led. The 1990s saw the rise of celebrity gossip television programs such as Entertainment Tonight, E! News, and The Inside Edition, which transformed tabloid journalism into televised entertainment and brought even more scrutiny to stars' personal lives. This period also introduced the concept of outing, which is publicly revealing someone's LGBTQ plus identity without their consent, which was surprisingly championed by some LGBTQ plus activists to increase visibility. Uh. However, this approach was highly controversial and often led to distress for those who got outed against their will, such as singer George Michael. And now we arrive to our time. The advent of social media in the 2000s brought celebrity speculation to new heights. Platforms like Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr allowed fans not only to follow their favorite stars, but to also form online communities where they could scrutinize and theorize about every post, every like, or every social interaction in real time. Fan culture became increasingly intertwined with sexuality speculation, especially amongst younger demographics who, like I've mentioned, sought out representation and projected their desires. For inclusivity onto celebrities. One of the most notable examples from this era was of course the One Direction fandom which Zane girly here, okay? Where fans speculated on the relationship between Harry Styles and Louis Tomlinson, dubbing it Larry Stylison. Despite both men denying the rumors, the theory persisted, fueled by fans' meticulous dissection of every interaction and the belief that their romance was being hidden. This put a strain on their friendship, with Louis later describing the speculation as disrespectful and harmful to his relationships and personal life. Also, Shansphere put out a fantastic video on this, so I will link it down below if you want to check it out. Despite society getting more progressive and more educated, the 2010s and 2020s have brought both increased visibility for the LGBTQ plus identities as well as heightened scrutiny. Celebrities like Lil Nas X have been able to embrace their sexuality openly, often gaining support from fans who champion their authenticity. However, the demand for disclosure still remains incredibly high, especially for those celebrities whose sexualities and orientations are unknown. The major issue with these speculations is how they reinforce harmful statements stereotypes and the gender binary. Take Shawn Mendes, for example. You guys know I am a Shawn defender. <clears throat> Despite his public dating history, many fans continue to insist that he was secretly gay, pointing to his mannerisms, his fashion sense, the way he sits, the way he talks, all of these nonsensical things as evidence. Also, he's just not making it easy to defend him because that interview magazine phone tour of his fingers. You've never seen fingers that thick in your life, for sure. Right? Yeah, Sean. Okay. Anyway, this reliance on stereotypical markers of masculinity or femininity to judge someone's sexuality is problematic. It perpetuates the notion that there's a correct way to express gender and sexuality. These stereotypes don't just hurt public figures, they create real-world pressures on everyone to conform to rigid gender norms. When we continue these patterns, we are inevitably telling everyone, and especially young men I've seen, that unless Unless they act a certain way, they don't fit into the acceptable versions of manhood or girlhood or masculinity or femininity. The same thing happened with Noah Beck. Remember when he was in a sway house and how him and his crew were the pinnacle of masculinity? But as soon as he left and grew from the hyper-masculine sway boy into a softer, fashion-forward individual who's a little animated at times, all of a sudden the he-must-like-boy statement started popping up. It's super weird. Why is him no longer conforming to the traditional straight boy standards and having one or two gay friends enough reason to invite such speculations but none of these speculations were there when he was in the sway house surrounded by shirtless boys who did cute dances on tiktok all day 
Our culture has for far too long conditioned us to see masculinity through narrow definitions where softness or flamboyance is interpreted as feminine or queer that we feel like we have to constantly police masculinity, perform it by the book or suffer a lifetime of ridicule. When celebrities, especially men, face relentless pressure to define or explain their sexuality based on how they look, how they act, how they dress, it limits the range of expression available to everyone. Boys and men, particularly queer or questioning ones, may internalize these stereotypes feeling pressured to conform to certain behaviors just to avoid speculation. And we might not realize this, but when we frame discussions about celebrity sexuality in scandalous terms, it creates stigma and fear around being queer. In some cases, outing or insinuations about someone's sexuality become political weapons. I mean, just last year, media personality Tucker Carlson dug up unsubstantiated claims about former President Barack Obama's past, suggesting that he had a secret queer history. Using questionable sources, Carlson amplified a narrative not because it was grounded in truth, but because it was provocative. The goal wasn't to inform, it was to humiliate and undermine Obama's character. And frankly, the whole thing was just a new low, even for somebody like Tucker Carlson. Like, how do you go from Fox News' prized asset, raking in 4 million plus viewers on average, to bringing crackheads on a show on X of all platforms just to prove that someone is gay? And for what? He was already president for two terms. He cannot run again. So the whole thing was just silly and embarrassing. The implications here are disturbing. Speculating about a public figure's sexuality, especially in a form of rumors with no credible source, can become a way to attack or belittle someone. For LGBTQ plus people, the impact of this isn't just damaging, it's dangerous. It reinforces the idea that being queer is something scandalous, something to be exposed exploited, something to be exposed. This kind of public outing isn't just distasteful, it perpetuates a culture of fear and shame. Like what happened to Khalid and the language that people are using around that situation is absolutely shocking. As Kevin Wong from The Trevor Project has pointed out, seeing speculations and mean-spirited rumors play out on a global stage makes queer individuals feel ashamed or fearful of coming out. The message becomes, your sexuality is everyone's business and we have a right to scrutinize it. It attaches stigma to identities that should be met with acceptance and understanding. These speculations could also be quite intrusive. What happened when Taylor Zakar Perez comes to mind? Celebrities are entitled to their personal lives just like everybody else. I know we don't believe that, but it is true. Speculation often relies on unverified information, rumor, or innuendo, and it infringes upon an individual's right to keep their private lives just that private, we seem to get a pretty good glimpse into the lives of our favorite celebrities through interviews, behind the scenes videos, and now social media. But it's safe to say that there's still a lot we do not know about them, and that is fully by choice. We should respect that. I feel like the age of the influencer put us in a gray area when it comes to this because we have public figures who share their entire lives with everyone and now we feel entitled and expect that from every single one of them but that shouldn't be the case. Back to TZP, due to his breakout role as Alex in Red, White and Royal Blue and ambiguity about his sexuality, he now had a swarm of new fans combing through not only his social media but his friends' social media as well, all with the attempts of unearthing evidence to validate the theories about his sexuality. Fans have even gone as far as speculating he's secretly married to some man named Garrett Gerson and I couldn't help but ask myself. Taylor has a public Instagram that he posts on regularly. Don't you think if he wanted people to know about his sexuality or this alleged marriage he would have, I don't know and this might sound like a crazy idea, posted about it? This invasive curiosity steps over a line where his privacy is no longer respected. It mirrors the way Jake Gyllenhaal, or as I like to say, Jake Gyllenhaal, and Timothy Chalamet also endured speculation simply because they portrayed queer characters. I don't know when the general assumption became if you can play a role authentically, it must reflect your personal life because these people are what? And say it with me now, actors. Yeah, yeah. But let us say he was married to this Gerd Gerson and you managed to prove it. Then what? You publicly out him, or worse, leave him feeling like he has no choice but to come out. Speculations create unbearable pressure on these figures to label themselves prematurely, robbing them of their own journey of self-discovery. I mean, what happened to Kid Connor was 
devastating. And I know they have multiple great videos that speak about that, but to summarize, this young actor was relentlessly harassed with people demanding he prove his queerness to justify his role in the show Heartstopper. Eventually, he came out publicly, but not because he was ready. He did it to stop the bullying, and at just 18 years old, when does it stop being curiosity and start being outright coercion? Forcing anyone into that position is incredibly inhumane, was stripping away their agency over their most intimate truths. And you think that people would have learned from that, but the cycle just continued with celebrities like Billie Eilish and now Shawn Mendes, who had to share that he's still figuring things out and acknowledge how painful it is to have his sexuality constantly questioned and how that messed with his psyche. We're not even realizing that we're forcing people into defensive positions about their personal lives and perpetuating an environment that dehumanizes individuals for views and engagement. Speculating about a celebrity's sexuality may seem harmless on the surface, but it has real consequences and it invades privacy, it reinforces harmful stereotypes, it forces people to come out on terms that aren't their own, and it stigmatizes queer identities. We need to be better not just as fans, but as a society. Instead of fixating on the private lives of public figures, let's celebrate their achievements, let's respect their boundaries, let's build a culture where everyone can feel safe to live and express themselves as they choose. These public figures, like all of us, deserve the freedom to explore and define themselves without the weight of our expectations. So next time, let us think twice before we speculate. Let us aim for respect, for understanding, and the belief that everyone's journey of self-discovery should be theirs and theirs alone. Also, it's so beautiful to witness celebrities share these experiences with us on their own accord. One of my favorite pop boys is Lau, and watching him share his journey with his sexuality throughout the last year has been so touching because you can tell that he waited until he was ready to share it, and it's just, it's so precious. So, I don't know, next time let us think twice before we retweet or forward that hot take. And that is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you loved it. I hope you found it entertaining and engaging. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. Do hit that subscribe button, okay? I'm gonna start saying that more. <laughs> Do hit that subscribe button. Go check out the channel. I'm pretty sure there's some videos that people love on there. I love you guys and I will see you guys in the next one. Remember, if you do not slay, then you do not stay in our song, period. Bye.